हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर ए एस अयर आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर द कोर्स ऑन फाइनाइट एलमेंट मेथड इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग आवर टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज शे फंक्शंस फॉर टू नोडेड बीम एलिमेंट व्हिच इज बेंडिंग एलिमेंट सो टू डिराइव द शे फंक्शंस ऑफ टू नोडेड बीम एलिमेंट इफ यू कंसीडर अ टू नोडेड बीम एलिमेंट ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड फ्लेक्जरल रिजिडिटी ई आई ओके लेंथ एल एंड फ्लेक्जरल रिजिडिटी ई आई लाइक दिस सो लेंथ एल एंड फ्लेक्जरल रिजिडिटी ई आई इफ यू एज्यूम द लेफ्ट एंड ऑफ द बीम एज अ ओरिजिन रिप्रेजेंटिंग द एक्स कॉर्डिनेट एट नो नंबर वन इज जीरो दैट इज एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो एट नो नंबर टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू एल No number one and no number two. We know that the beam has two degrees of freedom per node. One is vertical translation, which is vertical displacement represented by W, and second is rotation represented by theta. So W one and theta one are the degrees of freedom at no number one, and W two theta two are the degrees of freedom at no number two. so total degrees of freedom in one beam element are four two translations and two rotations now we know that following the procedure of bar element as well as cst element to derive the shape functions very first step is to write down the displacement function displacement function is written with the help of degrees of freedom as well as pascal triangle Now, if you remember our class on how to write down displacement function, we had discussed one important point when we write down the displacement function of beam element, and that is, in beam element, rotation is not a primary unknown. Theta is not a primary unknown. Theta can be determined if deflection W is known to us. Theta is equal to dW by dx. so theta is not a primary unknown primary unknown is deflection only so in bending element we are always writing the displacement function only for deflection not for rotation so to write down the displacement function w is equal to we have to consider total degrees of freedom are four so we have to select the four elements from the pascal triangle first element is one from the second row of pascal triangle since beam is a one dimensional element we have to select only one coordinate that is x coordinate so second element is x so we have to shift to third row where pascal triangle elements are x square xy and y square so from second row third row we have to select only x square because in other two element there is a y coordinate then we have to shift to next row that is cubic term Having elements x cube, x square y, x y square, and y cube. In this row also, other three elements are having y coordinates, so we have to select only x cube. So these are the four elements which we have to select from the Pascal triangle. All these four elements are multiplied by generalized coordinates: alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and alpha four. Then we have to add all these four. Terms together, that will be the displacement function for beam bending element. It is W. So this already we had discussed in detail how to write down W for the beam element. So this is W alpha one plus alpha two x plus alpha three x square plus alpha four x cube. If you write down this equation W in the matrix form. You will get W is equal to alpha one to alpha four in a column vector, and coefficients of or elements from the Pascal triangle will be a row vector. So we know that similar to previous two elements, this matrix, this is actually W, not U. This is called as parametric matrix, okay? And this is vector alpha. Let us assume this is equation number one, where P is called as P is called as parametric matrix. This is step number two. Now in step number two, this is step number one. Now step number two. 
displacement function in terms of nodal displacement so we have to represent displacement function in terms of nodal displacement so nodes left end and right end what are the cartesian coordinates of these nodes express this displacement function in terms of nodal displacement using the coordinates of node that is x equal to 0 at node number 1 and x equal to l at node number 2 right so we have to write down a displacement function for these two nodes now expression of w we have written already w equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x plus alpha 3 x square plus alpha 4 x square now using this w we can determine the expression of second unknown that is a rotation so how to derive the expression of rotation theta is equal to derivative of w with respect to x that is slope so if you differentiate alpha 1 with respect to x it's since alpha 1 to alpha 4 are the generalized constants the derivative of alpha 1 will be 0 in the second term derivative of x will be 1 so there will be only alpha 2 in third term derivative of x square is 2 x so it is 2 alpha 3 x and in, in last term it will be 3 alpha 4 x square derivative of x cube is 3 x square so these are the two expressions for two degrees of freedom at each node now what are the values of these two degrees of freedom at node number one and node number two that is nothing but displacement function in terms of nodal displacement so at x equal to zero w equal to w1 and theta equal to t1 theta1 so if you substitute x is equal to zero in about two equations you will get values of w1 and theta1 w equal to w1 when x is equal to zero and theta equal to theta1 when x is equal to zero so those will be first two equations similarly if you put x is equal to l here l l square l cube similarly in the second expression it is l and l square here if you put x is equal to l w will be equal to w2 and theta will be equal to theta2 so you will get actually four equations two equations of deflection w1 w2 at x equal to 0 1 equation at x equal to l second equation and you will get two equations of theta that is theta 1 equation and theta 2 equation so a total number of equations will be 4 so to write down those four equations in matrix form this is the simplest way to represent those four equations please try to understand w1 w1 represent the value of w at x is equal to 0 at x equal to 0 w equal to w1 so at x equal to 0 means this term is 0 this term is 0 this term term is 0 so since we have written alpha 2 alpha 1 to alpha 4 in a column vector the coefficient will be 1 0 0 and 0 right so this is first row of first expression similarly now expression of theta 1 at x equal to 0 so it will be 0 0 here it will be 1 and since there is no term of alpha 1 its coefficient will be 0 so it will be 0 1 0 0 similarly now same two equations we have to apply at node number 2 that is x equal to l w will be equal to w2 at x equal to l means this will be l l square and l cube and in first term the coefficient is 1 so 1 l l square l cube this is third row coefficients of expression of w at node number 2 and value of theta 2 at node number 2 that is theta 2 is equal to at x equal to l this is l and l square right so here coefficient is 1 and there is no term of alpha 1 so its coefficient is 0 so 0 1 this is 2 l and this is 3 l square coefficients of the remaining two so 0 1 2 l and 3 l square so 0 1 2 l and 3 l square so like this four equations we can write down in matrix form so now left hand side this vector is nothing but vector xe that represent the nodal displacement this matrix of 4 by 4 is called as connectivity matrix and this right hand side vector of alpha 1 to alpha 4 is a vector of unknown generalized coordinates so in more compact form this can be written like this xc x is equal to this left hand side vector a is equal to this 4 by 4 square matrix and alpha is equal to this 
right so we can write down in more compact form like this now if you assume this is equation number two now from equation number two you can find out value of alpha what is alpha is equal to alpha is equal to if you take this a on left hand side it will be a inverse so alpha is equal to a inverse into xc alpha is equal to a inverse into xc it is similar to previous two elements right this is xc now if you put this alpha value a inverse into xc into first equation which we had seen in the last slide this one if you put here alpha is equal to a inverse into xc you will get this w is equal to p into a inverse into xc right p into a inverse into xc so next step will be this one right here it is w not u it is a w or you can say the joint displacement degrees of freedom at nodes so p into a a inverse represent the shape function that we know this is w right n into x c where n is equal to p into a inverse now we can find out n that is shape function right n is equal to p into a inverse so what is p equal to p is equal to parametric matrix this we are discussing the very first step of this derivation when you write down expression of w in the matrix form so p is equal to 1 x x square and x cube now a inverse a inverse means inverse of this connectivity matrix inverse of this matrix now since it is a 4 by 4 matrix to find out its inverse if you use method of adjoint it will take lot of time right because it is 4 by 4 matrix and each cofactor matrix of each element will be of 3 by 3 matrix so it takes a lot of time when you find out determinant or inverse of 4 by 4 using adjoint adjoint method is more suitable up to 3 by 3 only but if it is 4 by 4 or more than 4 by 4 order matrix the elementary operation method is always simplest to find out the inverse elementary operation means just convert the given matrix into normal form by performing either row operations or column operations and when you perform the row operations or column operations on that matrix like this for example if you consider this matrix is a so you take equal to one identity matrix of same order identity matrix means diagonal elements will be one remaining all other elements are zero so this right hand side you assume one identity matrix of same order of matrix A. Now you perform either row operations or column operations on matrix A. Either we can perform row or column operation. We cannot perform both the operations parallelly. So perform either row or column operation and convert this matrix A into normal form or normal form is also called as identity matrix. So when you convert A into I whatever operations will perform on this left hand side same operation you have to perform on right hand side so when this a will be converted into i this i will be converted into a inverse so this is called as method of elementary operations to calculate the inverse of a matrix so in 4 by 4 matrix you have to use that elementary operation so in this problem also we have used elementary operation method Okay, so using that elementary operation, this will be the inverse of that matrix. Okay, this is the inverse, A inverse. So now if you want to find out the shape functions, you have to multiply this row with all four columns one by one. So you will get the four shape functions for the beam element. For example, N1 is equal to 1 into 1, 1 plus this multiplication is 0 plus x square into minus 3 by L square plus x cube into 2 by L cube that will be N1. So when you multiply this row with the second column 1 into 0 x into 1 x square into 2L x cube into 1 upon L square that is N2. Similarly from third row you will get N3 and from last row you will get N4. So values of those four shape function will be this one. This is N1 n2 n3 and n4 so these are the shape functions for beam element bending element 
Now, if you remember one important point we had discussed in the article of shape function, sum of shape function is always equal to unity except the bending element, right? That was the first. And value of each shape function is always equal to 1 at that node. So these two properties of shape functions we have written in bracket except a bending element. Why we have written except bending element? Because here if you check, if you add n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4, you will not get its addition is equal to unity. Right? Here, if you add n1 plus n3, that is shape function corresponding to deflection, n1 plus n3 is equal to 1. N1 plus n3 is equal to 1 and here you will get n2 plus n4 is equal to 1 n2 plus n4 is equal to 1 right similarly now if you want to find out the values of these shape functions at the nodes at node means at node number 1 x is equal to 0, right? At node number 1, x quadrant is equal to 0. So, if you put that x equal to 0 in all four shape functions, you will get that n1 is equal to 1 at x equal to 0 and remaining all three will be 0. Similarly, at node number 2, if you put x equal to L, you will get that n3 is equal to 1, remaining 3 will be 0. So, values of shape functions corresponding to deflections will be 1. Okay. These are the properties of shape functions for the bending element. So, this is complete derivation of shape functions for bending element. Right. So, the procedure is similar to bar element. I will repeat it briefly again. It is very simple. First, you draw the figure of beam bending element with the 4 degrees of freedom. Write down the detail about the bending element consider so total degrees of freedom are 4 2 translation 2 rotation so we have to select the 4 elements from Pascal triangle that is 1 x x square and x cube and write down the expression of w same equation if you write down in matrix form you will get this from which you can find out this is parametric matrix p and this is alpha matrix this left hand side is w right second step you can write down the displacement function in terms of nodal displacement. To write down that displacement function in terms of nodal displacement, first we have to determine the expressions of W and theta. Theta can be derived by taking derivative of W with respect to X. We are having two expressions of two degrees of freedom per node. If you want to find out what is W at node number one and theta at node number one, node number one means x is equal to 0. So, w equal to w1 and theta equal to theta1. So, if you put x equal to 0 in these two expressions, you will get expressions of w1 and theta1. Right? And then if you put x is equal to L in above two expressions, you will get expressions of w2 and theta2. So, if you write down these four expressions in matrix form, you will get like this w1 theta1 w2 theta2 and this is the connectivity matrix a this is vector of generalized coordinates alpha in a more compact form you can write down this equation like this now if you assume this is equation number two and if you find out value of alpha from this a into a inverse into xc and if you substitute this in equation number one you will get shape function is equal to p into a inverse into xc this is w so p into a inverse is called as shape function and that shape function you can determine p is equal to this matrix and a inverse you can find out by using elementary operation and then if you perform this multiplication of this matrix with the this matrix so row with the four different columns you will get the four values of shape functions these are the four shape functions and values of these four shape functions at node number one n one is equal to one remaining three are zero then at node number two n three equal to one remaining all are 0. Okay. So, this is the shape functions for two noded beam bending element. I hope all of you understand how to derive the shape functions of beam bending element. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.